welcome once again to the Box of Textures. Today, we're going to take a look at Voltage Modular from Cherry Audio. They just released a few days ago, somewhat unexpectedly to me, which could be my fault. They just released a few days ago a set of new set of modules, the VM900 collection which I'm not sure they're allowed to say, but I'm going to say they are Moog-style modules, as you can see and hear. Uh, I've got a pretty big patch set up, because that's what you do with a Moog modular, and I've got the 960 sequential controller, otherwise known in the modern era as a sequencer, and uh, I got a whole pile of modules, so let's take a quick look. Uh, these two in the top left are two oscillators, and I'm using these outputs. They're basically uh, square waves or uh, various rectangular widths. Uh, these same oscillators Those are saw waves, but uh, we're going to just stick to squares for this, the purposes of this demo. Uh, I've got a filter. The famed Moog filter, or one of them. And what we have is the sequencer. So row A of the sequencer goes to the frequency input of the two oscillators, basically giving you the notes. The oscillators go to the mixer, the mixer goes to the filter, the filter goes to an amplifier, and the amplifier goes to all these effects. Uh, so we can safely ignore these, and in fact, uh, what I'm going to do is turn them all off so we're not confusing the issue. Uh, I'm going to bypass them, shall we say. Maybe I'll leave the reverb on. So we can safely ignore the effects. Uh, everything here... Whoops. Everything here, these are three additional oscillators. Uh, basically, they're LFOs. Uh, they go through the attenuator module, and those that is controlling the pulse width, the first two. The third one is controlling uh, the filter cutoff as well. So we can ignore all those as well, because that's just part of the basic patch, and uh, that can be discussed some other time, but today we're talking about the sequencer and ratcheting. So this is the view we're going to have. We're going to ignore everything else. So let's take a quick look at the sequencer. There we go. So every step that the clock moves, there's a pulse, or in a sense, a negative pulse, but we'll get to that. So, right now, all we have are the notes in row A. Let's activate the eighth step. skip that step. So we have these seven steps, and these knobs control the oscillator frequency. Uh, they're basically voltages, which I have used the quantized output. That is something that Moog did not have. Uh, you had to suffer through strange voltage amounts, but thankfully we can quantize in voltage modular. Now, 
Row B controls the ratchets. A little over one volt gives you two ratchets, and you can even go further, although. We start to lose control pretty quickly, so let's take a look at that. So how the ratcheting works is a bit complicated. What we're doing is taking the pulse output of a voltage-controlled oscillator, what I have labeled as the ratcheter, and sending that to an envelope generator to trigger it. Let's take a look. We're going to put all these through the scope so we can see what's actually going on. This is the this is the pulse output of this oscillator and as you can see it's always running regardless of whether the sequencer is running or not. So uh, what we want is for the oscillator and the sequencer to be running synchronized at the same time. And you can see now, let me reduce the scale of that a little. There we go. So for every pulse, every clock pulse, which is the salmon colored row. For every clock pulse coming out of the sequencer, we have one pulse coming out of the ratcheter. And you can see once we lose the sync of the clock pulses, the oscillator is off on its own. So there's a couple of things here. Uh, First, the oscillator is running super slow with the coarse frequency, frequency switch set to sub. Let me turn that to audio. And uh, you can't really see it because it's moving very fast. But that is now running at audio speeds. Let's turn on the sequencer and hear that. So it gives you uh, all kinds of interesting potential, but that is not what we want for purposes of ratcheting. So every time the VCO sends out a pulse, the mildly simplified explanation is that it triggers an envelope generator, which comes in here and that in turn goes out to trigger the notes in the synth. But what we want to do is have this all triggered by the sequencer. So let's take a look at that. Uh, one of the interesting things about doing this in the analog domain is that we have to do odd things to keep the timing right. That is the purpose of the clamping point trigger on the VCO here. otherwise known in the modern world as sync. Uh, there's no actual connection between the speed of the sequencer and the speed of the oscillator the way there might be in the digital world. So we have to make that connection ourselves. So uh, here are the clocks coming out of the sequencer. Let me pull the sync off. So you can see that the clocks do not match up with the output of the oscillator. But once we put the sync in, we're forcing them to both fire at the same time. So the purpose of the clamping trigger, or sync, is to force the VCO to start over every time the sequencer sends out a clock. 
This is what keeps the uh, the two in sync. So we have the sequencer sending out the notes. That's here in row A. And what we have from the ratcheter, it's sending out pulses that fire the rest of the synth. So uh, we'll get to that shortly. So the question though is, how do we get ratchets out of this? So that's what row B is for here. So we send the output of row B of the sequencer here. We send that to the frequency control input of the VCO. So that controls how fast the ratcheter oscillator is running. So right now, all of these knobs are set to zero. So we're getting single pulses for every clock pulse one pulse from the VCO per clock. But let's turn up this knob. If we turn up a knob to some threshold, uh, which in this case is, whoops, here we go. Let's for no reason make it 1.17 volts. What happens is we're raising the frequency of the VCO so that there's a second pulse, or if we make it even more voltage, now we're getting three pulses per clock. Let's go back down to two. Let's take a look at what is actually going on. So we're now taking a look at the voltages coming out of row B of the sequencer. And you can see, every time we hit that first note, we're getting a pulse. And that pulse raises, here we go, the pulses come out here, and they go into the frequency control input of the ratcheter oscillator. So every time we hit the first knob of the sequencer in row B, we're increasing the voltage to over a volt, and that in turn is raising the voltage on the frequency control, which is making the ratcheter oscillator run faster. So we're getting two pulses out of the ratcheter for every one step coming out of the sequencer. Let's, uh, Now we have double pulses or ratchets on two different notes. Let's crank those back down. Uh, one thing to note is that I've been carefully picking a little over one volt, but uh, let's start that back at zero and I'll raise it very slowly. Still one pulse per clock. And now you hear the first hitch. What's happening is that the ratcheting oscillator is seeing more voltage on the frequency control input, so it's running faster. Uh, but it's not quite fast enough to get two full pulses. And at this step, what happens is when that step is over, we get another clock output, which goes to the sync input in modern terms, and that forces the oscillator to reset. So essentially, we're resetting the oscillator faster than we can really hear the effects of the ratchet. So at zero, uh, the oscillator is being reset faster than the second pulse can even start, so we hear nothing. When we get a little higher, 
we start to hear the very beginning of that second pulse, but the oscillator is getting reset. Now let's make it increase the voltage. So we're sort of getting one and a half pulses here. At this rate, we're getting the full two pulses, and we can go in further. Now we're getting two and a half pulses, three pulses. Let's go back to two. So this is all an example of what's going on in the analog world. This is not the usual ratcheting, digital ratcheting module where you can say uh, for every clock pulse give me three ratchets or give me two ratchets. Uh, that's very digital. This is purely analog and uh, that's one reason why I am not at all messing with the frequency. So, because we can't set actual frequencies, we're only setting voltages. So the voltage for the speed of the sequencer is 2.15 volts. And the frequency of the ratcheter is has a lot of things going on. First, it's set to sub, four feet, and then uh, 2.28 semitones. So if I change the speed of this ratcheter, that will totally throw off the synchronization. So on a digital sequencer, uh, you can freely change the speed of the clock, or uh, you may have a dedicated clock module which changes the speed of the oscillator or the dedicated ratcheting module. Uh, so you can see in the digital world we have a lot more control in a sense. Uh, maybe it's really just less finicky, but uh, anyway that is the process for what's going on. So uh, that is how we get ratchets out of a sequencer in the analog world. So uh, let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail because so far we've ignored the 962 sequential switch module, which is this guy in here, and uh, it's doing a couple of important things. First, uh, we have the sequencer start and stop buttons. So uh, one thing to note is the stop is trigger one and the start is trigger two. There, these also switch the corresponding input signals. You see there's signal one and input signal two. And uh, that's important because uh, what we're doing is sending the ratcheter VCO output pulses. So here's the rectangular output. We're sending that into signal input two of the switch. This means that whenever we press the second red button, or we can also use voltages on these trigger input jacks, uh, which opens up many other possibilities for automatic control, but uh, that's a little beyond the scope of what we're doing today. So uh, whenever we press this second red button, we're both starting the sequencer because you're, we're patched that into the oscillator on of the sequencer, and uh, there's also the oscillator off, red and green, so I could remember which ones they are. So uh, we're both starting the sequencer, and we're letting the VCO pulses at this signal input jack go to the output jack. That jack is patched into the envelope generator's gate jack, which then triggers the envelope, this handy envelope generator module, which then in turn, whoops, which then in turn uh, triggers the synth envelopes so that you can hear the notes. And that goes, this is the, I take it back. This is the uh, envelope generator that's connected to the VCA at the top, and this envelope generator is connected to the filter, which opens and closes the filter a little bit. So, uh, to summarize, pulses from the ratcheting VCO, that's here, 
go to the signal input of the switch module. The output of the switch module goes to the gate input of the envelope generator. And the envelope generator goes to the inputs of the main envelope generators in the noise making parts of the synth. So we hear one note for each step of the sequencer because there's one cycle of the ratcheting VCO. Like so. Or if we increase the voltage at the frequency controlled input of the VCO, if that voltage is high, we hear multiple notes for each sequencer step. So it's pretty darn complicated, but that is what is going on. So that's the basics of the ratcheting done with the knobs in row B. Now that's fine. And you can play with the sequence all you like and make it as interesting as you like. But uh, that is not exactly ideal. What we want is the ratcheting to be completely automatic and somewhat random. That way we don't have to sit there playing with the knobs. We can go do other things. So. That's what this set of modules does. The output of those four modules goes to another input of the ratcheter module frequency. So let's break this down a little. So now let's take a look at these three modules. Here's the clock. Well, let's put this on a different one. And we are seeing the random pulses. But let's take a look at what's going on. This first module it's a pure noise source. Let's see, will this work? Yes. So we're just getting white noise out of this first module. So we don't really need to see that. The white noise is going into the sample and hold. And you'll notice the sample and hold is being externally triggered by the same clock that is running the sequencer. So let's take a look at that signal. So every time a clock pulse comes out of the sequencer and goes into the trigger input of the sample and hold, it is sampling that instantaneous voltage that's coming out of the white noise generator. And as you can see, that is stepped greatly, which is not the same output we were used to seeing over here. So what we want to do is we want that to be an even, either on or off. So we have this handy envelope follower and uh, we're not using the envelope follower in a way that it was intended to be used. We're using it because it has essentially a threshold detector uh, in the quote unquote normal way to use an envelope follower, you put in an audio signal, it detects when there's a signal, and then it gives you a gate output so you can trigger your giant Moog synth with a guitar, say, or whatever. But we're just using it to, in a sense, measure this threshold. So let's take a look at that. And as you can see, it's on or off. So you're essentially smoothing out the sample and hold output. And uh, you can see that's a pretty big voltage and that's bigger than what we want. So what we've done is we've put that through an attenuator. Let me make 
this a little bigger. So they're on the same scale. So this, this row should, in theory, look exactly like what would come out of this row. Sadly, I can only do one of these at a time, or it's utter chaos. Let's make sure the scale is the same. This is set to 8. As you can see, the blue scale is a lot higher than the green scale. That's why we need the attenuator. So let's turn this back off again. So the orange scale is what we're getting out of. This is essentially a random ratcheting module. Uh, it's kind of done. I've done a couple of videos about ratcheting using Voltage Modular, and there are dedicated ratcheting modules, and there are a lot of sequencers that give you ratchet outputs. So you can say, on this step, I want three ratchets, say. Uh, and there are ratcheting modules that you can use sample and holds as the inputs, and that will randomly give you random ratchets, which is what we like. Uh, what we've done here, however, is use is done this entirely in the analog domain. So we're not typing in the number two. We're using an analog noise generator being sampled at an with an analog sample and hold module. So that random voltage is being held and that random voltage is being detected, and if it's over this particular threshold, it's being sent out to the ratcheting oscillator, and that is generating the multiple pulses. So I feel like I've really gone the long way around. But that is basically what is going on. So this is in place of a digital ratcheter module. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the whole point of this exercise was to do this entire thing just using Moog modules. And uh, that's one reason why I turned off the effects, which I just pointed at and you couldn't see. Uh, Nothing wrong with using effects, but I didn't want to muddy the waters. So this is entirely VM900 module based. All the programming is done in the analog domain. Uh, there's nothing digital about it if you, uh, you know, ignore that we're actually in my MacBook Pro laptop computer. So I love this. It's just... Uh, It's a random ratcheting done on a Moog-style modular. <laughs>